We're talking about Moses growing up in Egypt, remember? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the king, the pharaoh, wanted all of the little baby boys to be killed, right? Mm -hmm. And Moses' mom wanted to save him, so she was disobedient to that law, and she put Moses in a basket and pushed him down the river. And who found Moses in the river? The who princess. Go ahead, The count. princess. The princess, yeah, good job. Well, hey friends, welcome back to the cabin for another day in the life video. The boys and I are flying solo today. Joe is in town running some errands, so we are doing some homeschool, and I think I'm going to make a blueberry ice cream later on. I have been telling you guys for a little while that I was gonna share this recipe with you. I made a batch of this with all of the blueberries, not all of them, but a serving of the blueberries that we picked this summer, and it was absolutely amazing. It was a hit, and the kids loved it, and so did I. But before I get started with any more of the video, I wanted to pop on really quick and just share some news with you guys. And uh, for those of you that were on the last live stream with us a few days ago, Joe and I, you kind of already know what I'm gonna be talking about because you heard the story on the live stream. But I did promise that I would share it with the rest of you in a video, a regular video. Um, we had some really bad news this week. Uh, just a tragic thing happened to our family. And I say our family because our animals are part of the family, right? So our, you know, we have two cats. We have Asher and we have Rusty. They are brothers from the same litter. And you guys might remember when we brought them home, we had not been at the cabin very long. We had just moved here to Alaska and we got these two kittens for Parker and they've just grown up together here on the property. They're in almost every one of our videos and our cats from the time that they were old enough, they have always been indoor outdoor cats. So Joe put in a cat door on the front door and they just had the convenience of going in and out as they please so we didn't have to have a litter box they would go to the bathroom outside and you know they would use trees as their scratching posts instead of my furniture just a lot of things that were really awesome when we had when you have an indoor outdoor cat our cats in virginia were strictly indoor so those are all things that we had to mitigate making sure we had good scratching posts for them. We had to deal with the litter box and cleaning up the litter all the time. So we just really enjoyed the convenience of having the, the cats be able to go in and out when they want to. And out here on 15 acres, uh, pushed out as far as we are, it wasn't an issue. And the cats always stayed around here, around the cabin, and really didn't have a reason to leave the property, right? It's, it's a huge property. They have so much fun. It's like a, a jungle gym for the cats 
outside. They even go into the sheep pasture and they play with the sheep and they just really love it. And I think instinctively for a cat, you know, they, they like being outside. Now, if it's been indoor its whole life and it doesn't know any better, like our cats in Virginia, then that's one thing. But uh, we did introduce these guys to the outdoors and once we did, they just, they loved it. They absolutely loved it. So the day before Thanksgiving, Asher here decided to leave the property and he was gone for like a full 24 hours and we couldn't find him anywhere. And um, Thursday morning, Thanksgiving morning, I just so happened to open the shades like I do every morning, but I just so happened to look out down the driveway and I'm glad I did because right when I looked out the window down the driveway, I saw Asher coming home. He was coming you know, from the beginning of the driveway like he had left the property and he was returning home but I saw something not right. And Asher has been known to be quite the hunter. He's got that real animal instinct. Asher just thinks he's a tiger, right? <laughs> he's got the instinct to kill for sure. When I saw him coming down the driveway that morning and I, he looked kind of weird to me, I thought he was carrying like a bird in his mouth because I saw something dangling from his mouth and he kind of was like limping along and I was like, what is he doing? Is he trying to not drop whatever he just caught? And I saw something dangling and as he, you know, it was still dim because it's not getting light here in Alaska until like 9.45 in the morning. So I'm like looking down the window, out the window, down the driveway, I mean, and I'm watching him as he gets closer to the cabin. And as he got to where we parked the vehicles, he collapsed and couldn't go anymore. And I was like, I hit Joe and I'm like, oh my God, something's wrong with Asher, he's hurt. Like I realized, in that moment, as he was closer now that I could see him, it was not anything in his mouth that he caught. It was actually his wrist just dangling off of his arm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, something happened. He got attacked by a predator. I could definitely tell that he was injured really badly. So Joe went out there, brought him in, gave him to me. And when I picked up Asher, he was completely covered in snow and, and ice was just stuck all over to his belly. Um, like he had to take a lot of breaks on his way home and he was severely injured. And when I brought him in the house, he had what looked to be puncture wounds all over his body. Like I assumed that a fox had tried to attack him. The size of the puncture wounds in his arms and stuff looked like fox teeth, like something had bit at him. And I could tell instantly that his arm was broken. Something was definitely broken in his arm, uh, the wrist for sure, because it was just not attached really uh, by anything but like his skin. He had a puncture wound in his head, puncture wounds in his neck, the right side of his shoulder, all over his little arms, both of them, and it was just horrible. And uh, being that it was Thanksgiving, all the vets were closed, so we had to try to get into an emergency vet. And when they finally did the x-ray on him, you know, I wrapped his arm the best I could with gauze, pretty snug just to keep it immobile uh, because he was kind of moving around and I didn't, if, if, if it was broken, I didn't want him to cause any more damage. So I wrapped him up really good until we could get him in. So they took him back immediately for x-rays and I'll pop in a picture here to show you guys. I was just completely mortified by the x-ray picture. The vet told us it was not a predator that got him. Someone shot him with a shotgun. He was just riddled with BBs throughout his body. We counted just from that angle of the x-ray, um, almost 20 BBs in him. And there was others that weren't in that angle of the x-ray. And his right arm was broken in multiple places. So his femur was split down the center long ways. His wrist was completely shattered. The bone and the x-ray just looks like just powder. It was just shattered. There was fragmented bone everywhere. And his poor little paw, all of his little fingers were shattered by BBs. There was just BBs all in his paw and the fingers were just gone. I'm trying not to cry because I cried on a live stream. <laughs> And it was very fresh when we did the live stream on Saturday. It had just happened and we spent all night at the vet clinic. Uh, he went into surgery and so it was fresh. And I, I'm doing a little bit better now that I've had a few days to process what has happened. So the vet basically said, 
we have to amputate his leg, his arm. And I just broke down in tears because I'm like, what? Like this kitten, this cat isn't even a year old. He's 11 months old. He turns one next month in December. And you know, cats live a long time. And I, I pretty much begged her. I'm like, is there nothing we can do to save his arm? Like, can we not cast it and just let it heal on its own? And even if he walks with a limp or something for the rest of his life, can we not save his arm? And she was like, you could, but we would have to call in a specialty surgeon, which is gonna be very, very expensive. And we really recommend just amputating it because of all of the fragmented pieces that are in his arm. They could cause problems later, which might bring you guys back in here, which is more money. And it was just a lot. So like in an instant, we had to make the decision to amputate Asher's little arm. Asher is a three-legged kitty. He's, you know, our tripod kitty now. So he's actually doing really good. I took off his little t-shirt today that they put on him after surgery and I washed it for the first time. He had some dry blood on it. Um, so I washed it today and it was the first time that I saw his scar from them taking his arm off. And it's like, oh my gosh, you guys, it's gotta be this long. I mean, it's just huge. This scar is unbelievable and it's really hard to see him without his arm. It's quite devastating. When Parker first saw it, he just bawled his eyes out. You know, Parker has a cat, has a heart for his cats and all of his animals. And it's, it's almost kind of scary when you see something like that, an amputated limb and the scar and the staples that are in there right now. So, but he's doing really good. I have to tell you guys, this cat I was joking on the live stream and I was talking about how much of a gangster he was because wherever some psycho shot him, which we're on 15 acres, so it was far away, right? It was far enough away that I can't even imagine how far he had to crawl home, but he came home. And that's amazing to me. This cat was shot with a shotgun and his arm was shattered and he had BBs all throughout his body. And he literally like drug and crawled himself all the way back to the cabin. And it's just gut wrenching because when he got here, like I said, he collapsed. It's like he knew he was home. He knew he was safe and he couldn't go anymore. And he's just resilient. You know, the first day I had to um, put him, hi baby. He's pretty drugged up on pain meds still. I had to put him in the litter box several times throughout the day. He couldn't figure out how to get in the litter box with the one arm gone. And you know, then he would try to go to the bathroom and sit up and normally they use their two legs to balance themselves and he, he forgot he didn't have that arm and he like fell forward and face planted onto the ground. And it was just like, it's devastating, right? It's like, he didn't realize it was gone. And that was, um, Probably one of the most heartbreaking things is when he had that moment that he was like, oh, wow, okay, I can't hold myself up anymore, which I think he will learn. He's already learning over the last couple days, but in the beginning, it was just so sad and so heartbreaking. He's eating, he's drinking, he's going to the bathroom on his own, he's sleeping through the night. Um, he's got a few more days of the pain meds, and then he goes back in two weeks to get the staples taken out. and. You know, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and read up on some things and three-legged animals are actually really resilient and I think he's gonna do just fine. Asher is strong and he's a fighter and he fought to live hardcore. And so we will love him the same. I'm just glad that we still have him and that, that they didn't kill him. So as far as who did this, right? Like what kind of monster could do something like this to an innocent cat? A lot of people said um, on the live stream comments, which by the way, you guys were unbelievably kind and supportive for Asher, it was so sweet. Uh, people were saying, how scary is it? Like, did someone come on your property and do this? Was someone, you know, trespassing? No, I don't believe so because we actually followed Asher's tracks out of the driveway down the road until we lost them as he went off into the woods somewhere. So he definitely left the property and this was done off of our property and then he crawled his way home after he got shot. And like I said on the live, I struggle because I'm, I am a, I take being a pet owner very seriously. And I've always been, and I know we, we talked about this on the live, so some of this might be repeat for those that were with me on the live, but I know a lot of you haven't heard, heard what happened to him yet. So I, 
keep my animals under my control. I'm, I'm, I'm like Judge Judy, you know what I'm saying? Judge Judy's like, it's your animal, you keep control of it. If it bites somebody, if it destroys property when it's out of your control, that's gonna be your responsibility. Like it's, it's kind of irrelevant. And I'm kind of, I draw a hard line in the sand with animals because I've had other neighbors in other houses we've lived in that didn't do that. And they just didn't take any responsibility for their animals. They came in and, you know, terrorized my chickens, destroyed my garden, jumped on my car, scratched my car up when I would drive into the driveway. Like, it's really frustrating. It's like, get your freaking animal and keep it on your property, you know? But I also know with animals, things happen and accidents happen. Like how many of us have opened the door and had a dog run out accidentally or a cat run out? You know, Bradley took off on the property one day for 40 minutes when he heard a tractor that scared the bejesus out of him and we had to search for him for 40 minutes. So we normally always have our animals under control on our property. And um, I think that Asher's instinct to kill, Asher's instinct to hunt prey, whether it be birds, rabbits, whatever, uh, got the best of him and he decided to leave that the property and you know from this point forward the cats are indoor cats unfortunately we will be building them some type of catio you guys had so many awesome suggestions on the live stream and with joe being so handy i know we can build some kind of really cool outdoor area for them so they can enjoy the fresh air and watch the birds and chase the butterflies and all the things so but i just can't i can't now that he's leaving the property like that i cannot let them do that anymore because i have to protect them so the cat door is closed indefinitely from here on out we bought a new litter box and they're forever going to be indoor cats so unfortunately people are crazy to me if there was an animal on my property that wasn't mine i would shoo it off i would you know joe's had to run off stray dogs that have come on our property here he shot off rounds into the forest not shooting the dogs, but shooting off rounds to scare them, and we ran them off the property. You know, I certainly am not the human that would jump to grabbing a shotgun and shooting a 14 pound domesticated house cat. Like, I have more compassion than that, and I think it's cruel, and I think it's unnecessary. There's other things that you can do if you've got stray animals coming on your property. Call animal control, get a trap we did this in virginia we went to animal control rented a trap from them and we trapped this kitten with cat food it was actually really easy to trap him gave him over to animal control and animal control rehomed him like so you don't have to murder these animals and unfortunately this person was i say unfortunately but fortunately because i'm glad asher is still here but i'm sad that he had to suffer the way that he did there's a part of me that wishes that he would have just killed him because I can't imagine the pain and agony that he went through trying to get home that day and now trying to recover from losing his arm, right? Um, but the guy obviously needs to do some target practice because he, he didn't kill him. He just tortured him really, really badly. So I have heard through the grapevine, um, there, there's, how do I say this? I'm pretty sure that I have a good idea of who did it. I'll just say that. And the bad thing is, you know, someone said in the comments on the live stream, isn't there, can't you call the trooper or can't you call the sheriff? Can't you call? No. I mean, first of all, we live so far out here. Like even when there's an emergency emergency, it's two to three hours before they, they get on scene out here. So they're certainly not going to be able to do anything. Um, because one, I can't prove it. You know, the guy can just be like, it wasn't me. How I can't, I have no way of proving that it was this person. And the other problem is that my cat should have been in my care. My cat should have been on my property under my control and not roaming the neighborhood on someone else's property. So um, this person has been known to kill other people's cats. And actually I, I heard from somebody a couple days ago that he tortured a cat that he caught. He put it in a kennel and starved it for days and then said when he was done torturing it, he was gonna shoot it through the kennel. Like, this person is a psycho, legit a psycho, a coward, someone that was probably picked on in high school, never had a girlfriend. Like, the fact that you feel good about yourself and you can pick up a loaded gun and shoot an innocent cat like this, it's really pathetic, to be honest with you, and it makes me sick. Um, I mean, that's really all I can say about that, right? So. 
at this point, it is what it is. Um, we've learned a really hard, hard lesson, and unfortunately, there is nothing we can do about it, and this is not the first time that this has happened to cats in this area. So anyway, that is what happened to Asher. Asher was shot by a crazy person and somehow made his way home. He still has multiple BBs that are still in him. The doctor took out as many as they could, but some of them will be left in him forever because it, it would be more dangerous to go in and try to dig them out than to just leave them. Um, they did, one of the BBs did go through his his head here thankfully it didn't it did not go through the skull or anything it went through the skin of his head down into his uh eyelid and when he came home that day he had a huge blood bubble under his eyelid and the vet did go in and get that out thankfully it did not hit the eyeball not at all so it has no effect on his vision and he's doing really good <laughs> he's doing really good so um, I wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, one, just because we share a lot with you here on our channel and our animals are a big part of our channel. So obviously someday soon, you're gonna see Asher, our three-legged cat, and you're gonna be like, what happened to Asher's arm? <laughs> he wasn't three-legged in the last video, right? So I wanted to share that with you guys just because sometimes it's easier if I can just post my, my video link and say, hey, just watch this little clip. This is the story of what happened to Asher versus having to re-explain the whole thing. But he will be a three-legged kitty for the rest of his life. He's our little gangster kitty. Anyway, guys, that's the update on Asher. As you can see, he is passed out on pain meds. He's got a couple more days of the pain meds. I can't wait to see him spunky again and running around the house and, you know, living life as a little tripod kitty. So anyway, thanks you guys for all your sweet comments on this whole situation. And some of you even <laughs> donated money to Asher's surgery fund, which we would never ever ask for money and that wasn't the purpose of sharing the story with you guys um but at the same time i know that you guys want to help and i do the same thing too when i hear someone's story i i give what we can and it's the christmas season right it's not easy everybody's trying to get gifts for their children and families and you guys are just amazing and we sure appreciate that we really do it was not cheap right it was not cheap getting his little arm amputated and the blood work and the x-rays and all the things. So I just wanted to say thank you very much. All right, we're gonna get started on this delicious blueberry ice cream recipe. This is super simple, you guys. I will link this recipe in the video description as always. You're gonna just put your blueberries and some sugar and a little bit of water in a saucepan and just heat these on medium, stirring them continuously until all that delicious juice starts to come out of the blueberries. And you can even squish these down a little bit if you want to, but we're just gonna get all that juice out because this is gonna make a simple syrup for our ice cream. Once your syrup is ready to go, we're just gonna put this somewhere to cool off until we're ready to use it. I'm gonna set it on the front porch because here in Alaska, it doesn't take very long to cool off. <laughs> We're gonna mix up this heavy cream with a mixer until we get these beautiful soft peaks. And then we're just gonna mix the two bowls together, the whipped cream and then also the sweetened condensed milk with that vanilla. Once 
Once you're done, you're gonna put your ice cream into a freezer safe dish and just sprinkle the rest of those frozen blueberries on top. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're gonna grab that delicious syrup that we made and we're gonna drizzle it over the top of our ice cream. After you've put that on there, you're gonna grab like a flat spatula, a really skinny one, or even like a shish kebab stick. That's actually what I like to use. And we're just gonna drag the shish kebab stick through the syrup and blueberries. And what that's gonna do is it gonna, it's gonna help that syrup to seep down into the ice cream, giving it that beautiful blueberry marbled look. Joe is continuing work in the addition. He is working on the vent heater that we are installing to bring heat from the boys' room upstairs in the loft into our new addition. So he's running a PVC pipe and we bought this heater, this vent heater on Amazon that has a fan. So it'll suck the warm heat from the boys' room down into our bedroom addition. Now you guys crack me up. So many of you left so many funny comments on our last video talking about, oh, you guys better hope the boys don't eat beans for dinner. And don't forget that sound carries through vent systems. Yes, these are all things that Joe and I have thought about. <laughs> uh, you know, living with guys, boys in general, I am completely outnumbered here, right? So the bean issue, the struggle is real. So that's something, unfortunately, I've gotten very used to. And as far as the noise, you know, We'll just turn the fan on and help drown that out a little bit. <laughs> Some of you have asked if we are going to be installing a little wood burning stove in our bedroom addition. We will not be doing that. This addition is just a small 10 by 12 addition, so we don't want to have a second fireplace that we have to tend to in the cabin. I really think this uh, vent heater system that Joe's installing will, will work really well. Uh, if it doesn't and we need to supplement heat in the new master addition, we will probably just get another wall propane heater. We have a wall propane heater in the living room that we use when we leave to go to the remote cabin for a few days and things like that and it helps keep the cabin at a certain temperature so if we need to install something like that to supplement heat in the new bedroom we will do that that's no big deal at all The other thing Joe's working on today is rewiring one of our outlets. So Joe's already done all the wiring for the outlets in our new addition, but this one in particular, we had up in the corner. We had planned on installing our TV in the corner of the bedroom, but we've decided not to do that. We're just gonna set it on top of our tall dresser. So he is moving this outlet down by the new uh, vent that he just installed so that we can plug that vent into that outlet. Thank you. 
I have to tell you guys, I'm quite impressed with Joe because he has really taken on with picking up his camera and getting shots of what he's doing during the day while I am in the house doing school with the boys. And you know, Joe doesn't say much, but he has very much become a part of this YouTube channel. It used to be a lot of videos with just me doing like how to can, how to do things around the homestead. And really Joe has just stepped up and really likes to share kind of his perspective and day in his life here on the homestead. So this project is coming together super fast. The wiring looks fantastic. He even put the light switches in for our new bedroom and it was a job well done for Joe today. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away show us where we are what makes the sun go to sleep every night and what's it dreaming of i wonder how come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds maybe it's just like me a little bit scared of heights why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside? It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. Ooh, I wonder. How come the trees get undressed when it's cold? And don't they miss the leaves they left behind? Could it be to make the ground shine like cold until winter comes? Until winter comes? Until winter comes? It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. fine rule in the Bible is to the good do is to do good is to do good Well, good morning friends and welcome back to the cabin for another day. We just got done with our homeschool and Joe has been working away on the addition per the use. We're just trucking along, you know, every day it's getting that much closer to being done and I am super excited. I wanted to show you guys, I got the cutest gift from a subscriber. We get gifts every year. Um, sometimes you guys send things to the boys, sometimes something really special for Joe and I. And we have had some things that have literally just brought me to tears. I'm touched by the words that you guys say and the thoughtfulness to send such sweet things to our family. So uh, Sheila is one of our subscribers. And I'm not gonna cry. I did enough crying last night, it was bad. Anyway, she said that when we went on our, our break from YouTube for the month of October, she started watching older videos, um, said she was kind of fiending, missing the Watsons. So she went through our video library and was watching some older videos. And she saw that we always tell the kids, like whenever you see a butterfly, that is Grandma Diana, that's Joe's mom, coming back to say hello to us. His mom passed away. Oop, Asher, whoa, whoa. Where are you going, buddy? Hey, hey, Asher's up and trying to walk around. Hey, sorry, just one second. Yeah, let's just chill out, okay? Crazy. Asher just doesn't realize his leg is gone, you guys. Like, he's just kind of all over the place. He's hopping on three legs around the house already and just up and ready to live his life. And I'm kind of like, whoa, buddy, slow down. But I guess he knows what's best and what he can handle. He just kind of freaks me out a little bit. He's trying to go upstairs and I'm like, whoa, let's not venture on the stairs. I don't need you rolling down the stairs and cutting that incision open. 
But anyway, um, as I was saying, we always tell the children that if they see a butterfly, it's Grandma Diana coming back to say hello to us. And so it's just kind of a thing for our family whenever we're out and about working in the yard or whatever and a butterfly lands on you or something like that. We're like, oh, hi, Grandma. Like we just, it's just this thing that we do. Well, you guys know my grandpa passed away in May. My nampa, that's what I've always called him. And all of a sudden, like we started seeing these dragonflies out at the remote cabin and we'll be out fishing and they'll just land on us. And so we started saying that the dragonflies represent my grandpa. So whenever we see a dragonfly, that's grandpa, nampa coming to say hello. So she says, you know, she was watching videos and saw this and she saw that on our Christmas tree, we have butterflies all over the Christmas tree. I love them. So she got me this beautiful dragonfly ornament for the Christmas tree. I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. And then she got me this absolutely beautiful shimmery dragonfly. And it's just precious. It's like this crystal. I don't really know what it's made out of, but it's glass and it's shimmery like dragonflies shimmer, right? and it's just precious and I got it. Um, you know, it kind of brings out the little girl in me. Um, when we get things that are sparkly and pretty, we just get all giddy and excited inside. So I definitely was like, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. But the fact that she wrote in her letter that she specifically went shopping for me and got these dragonflies to represent my grandpa for me, it just touched me very deeply. I just thought it was super precious and um, wow, here we go. I'm not going to cry. It's just something that I'm going to cherish forever, Sheila. So thank you very much for thinking of me. I really, really enjoy the gifts from you guys. So do the children. Uh, last night they opened up some of their slingshots that they got from some of you guys and then let me make sure they're outside. We've got a big Christmas present. They're starting to come in for the kids. Somebody got them a set of bow and arrows. They are going to be beside themselves excited. So anyway, I just, I wanted to just say thank you. It's super exciting. And those dragonfly gifts just touched my heart in a very special way. Hey, <laughs> what's up gangster? Huh? What's up gangster? You trying to just run around, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you're like, what, Mom? What? I got three legs. It's okay. Hey, Bradley. You trying to be like center of attention? Oh, look what you did to my lens, Bradley. No. <laughs> He's like, Mom, I've got three legs, but I'm good to go. I've got this. He's doing good. So he just finished one of his pain medications this morning. He doesn't have to take it anymore. And he's on the last one. The, the one that he's on now is for pain and inflammation. But he's doing really good. All right, first ever Christmas card exchange with Home Free Alaska. I announced it on the community wall on the channel the other day. If you guys would like to send us a Christmas card this year, we are gonna send one back to you. I'm gonna do my very best to send a card back to you. And it's just been a lot of fun already. We are gonna all sign the card. So you're gonna get a signed card from the whole Watson crew. I'm even gonna try and see if I can get with Lexi and James and get them to sign it as well because their picture is also on the Christmas card. So. If you would like our mailing address, check out the video description of any of our videos and it is listed there. It's also listed on the community post and you can send us a Christmas card. I even talked Joe into sitting down and signing some cards with me. So it's been a lot of fun. I, you know, we keep your Christmas cards every year for the season. We display them in the cabin and they're just beautiful. It's really fun to put faces with some of the names that we talk to in the comment section all the time because you guys do, some of you do the pictures your cards like we do and uh, my favorite part is just reading your sweet messages I really love it this one in particular she did a poem a Christmas poem about Jesus and it actually brought me to tears as I read it so I just didn't I saved you the uh, you know the tears and cut that part out <laughs> but we love getting the cards you guys send us some Christmas cards this year and we will send you one back Yes, if you want to send one to Lexi and James, just send it to our mailing address and we'll make sure that they get it.
I have to tell you guys that this week and a half or so has been super challenging for me, not just me, but our whole family. You know, with Asher getting shot, he really did become like an infant. I had to get up in the middle of the night. We had to give him medications, take him and help him use the bathroom. It's been, it's been a struggle taking care of him. Uh, and you guys know that Parker just changed homeschool curriculums to an online curriculum with Abeka. And so anytime you change curriculums, there's going to be some challenges and hurdles and things that you've got to kind of get through and figure out. So that's been a little tough too. And the change of the season, the darkness coming in so early during the day and the holidays right around the corner. For some of you, you might be able to relate, right? Like it's it's the season of family and I don't have a very big extended family. My grandfather just passed away. Joe's grandpa just passed away right before Thanksgiving. And so while the holidays are super celebratory, they're also kind of a moment of, uh, you know, bittersweetness because we miss those that we love that are no longer here. So I am super excited that tonight we're having a delicious dinner. We're having some of our homegrown lamb that we just butchered and processed a couple weeks ago. And then we're going to eat some of that blueberry ice cream that we made together in the beginning of this video. So I just wanted to thank you guys for hanging out with us for another day in the life here at the cabin. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get this video out this week on time, but I'm super grateful that I did and I hope that you guys enjoyed it.
good? <laughs> Chicken poop on your hand? <laughs> Callan! <laughs> That looks cold with the hay, huh? Is it crooked? I think it is crooked. Why are you crooked? Stop being crooked. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's my microphone cord. I need you to keep your hairy arm out of my frame. Why can't you put Tina and Jill? Because you have to sign it. No, why can't you sign it for me? You have to sign, sign it, Joe. Name. They want to see your name. They want to know you signed they it. They see my name, so you just put Tina and Joe. I can't forge your signature. Babe? Babe. What? You That's... forged my signature on this house. I... What? That is a felony. I have not done that, okay? Just look there and keep signing. Don't lick the cards, <laughs> ew! Sending your spit all the way from Alaska. Yeah. Babe, your butt is literally in my shot. Babe! <laughs> yeah, your dad just twerked. I saw that. <laughs> Babe! What are you doing? Twerking? I already got you, you little camera hog. Yeah, don't give me the side eye. I already got you, Bradley. <laughs> so, what you be? Ew, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Over. Oh, that's a good boy. <laughs> oh, yes. We are not ghosts with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. No, stop. Babe, I don't need you to help me undo the butter. Ew, that's so weird.